Well, sand has been, and now all you need to do is work out what you're going to be doing next year. It's time for another show from Colin Jones, the reasonable adventurer. Time for you to take another step towards creating your own opportunities for satisfaction. And it is a huge welcome to episode 85 of The Reasonable Adventurer. Today we're talking about becoming butterflies. And this is a topic which has just been rolling around in my head over the last few days. Um, I promised you last episode that we would be uh, releasing a uh, ebook for you, and that's now up, The Naked Educator and Other Lessons Learnt. Uh, you should be able to pick it up if you're picking up this episode at its release. Uh, then that'll time nicely with the availability of that book. It's going to be, I think, December 3 through to January 3, the book will be freely available on uh, Amazon. Uh, so you can pick it up for your Kindle. If you don't use Kindle, just download the app. It's free, and you can just, uh, on your Android or on your iPhone uh, or iPads, uh, tablets, and you can just pick up the book for free. At the same time, you can also pick up... Um, uh, my other books. So you've got the 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 rock uh, that gathered moss, or is it the stone that gathered moss? Um, that's interesting. I should actually know that, shouldn't I? I should know which books I'm releasing. Um, the stone that gathered moss, and also the thirty one laws of entrepreneurship education. I've actually made both of those books uh, free of charge again. Um, so right now, if you haven't picked up those books before, then by all means, jump in and grab the books. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the books uh, in a minute. But what I wanted to talk to you about today was the value of writing those books. And, um, you know, you you have in the back of your mind, gee, it'd be cool if I was actually able to make a couple of dollars um, writing these books. I think everybody would like that in a perfect world. I've had some checks sent to me from Amazon, so that is always nice. Um, I wouldn't have been able to pay the mortgage with those checks, but you have to start somewhere. And I, you know, I always find myself dreaming, well, what if you had 100 of those books? That'd be interesting, right? If you had 100 books and you were getting a check every month, it'd be interesting because the great thing about eBooks is you don't have to write a huge book. It's just your opinions, your thoughts, your observations on something. And so they don't have to be long books. So the the um, the naked educator and other lessons. It's just me looking back at the last fourteen years of teaching at University of Tasmania, and me reflecting on the funny things that have happened, and the lessons that I've learnt along the way as an educator. So if you're an educator, you're involved in entrepreneurship. I think you might find uh, some of the things in that book interesting, and if it's free, why not? The 31 Emerging Laws of Entrepreneurship Education, um, I really enjoyed writing this book. I, I was heading over to um, see some friends in Florida, Rebecca and Kevin and Giles and Eric, of course. And on the way over there, I thought, I'm going to start writing a book. So I started writing what I thought were some of those little um, laws about entrepreneurship education. So they're not fixed, they're always contextual, but they're nevertheless important things for people to take into account when they're actually planning their activities. And so I wrote half of them on the way over and half of them on the way back and a few while I was there. And that one's been out now for nearly a year. And uh, as I say, the other book um, is The Stone That Gathered Moss, which is a midlife memoir that I wrote this time last year, which just enabled me to look back on my development as a person and to think about how fear had gripped me for so much of my life and how I was able to move away from certain aspects of that fear. So it doesn't mean that I've become superhuman. Uh, it just means that I've been able to overcome certain areas of fear. And a lot of the fear, I suspect, are in areas that also hold other people back too, You know, in relation to learning. Um, and understanding themselves as a learner. So it was great to write those books. And when I was putting this one together, it just sort of brought back to me a really interesting, um, wrote a paper uh, back in 2003 
Um, and it was really interesting to write this um, paper. The paper was called Beyond E-Commerce. So that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, like, that's how old this paper is because we're talking about e-commerce. But anyway, uh, Beyond E-Commerce, When Caterpillars Know What Butterflies Understand. And this particular paper was built around um, the po- a poem or a, um, a little writing about a caterpillar. And so I wanted to share with you these ideas about the caterpillar and then bring it back to you and hopefully inspire you to want to write something. It might be something for you. It might be something that you publish. It might be something for just people who are close to you to read, right? But I think there's a lot of value in writing something. You don't need to be a brilliant writer. You don't have to have great grammar. I'm sure that the ebook that I've just put out today will have some grammar areas in it. And to be honest with you, I'm not worried, right? I'm not worried because it's a part of who I am, right? So it's not about being a brilliant writer to be a writer. Just write. But anyway, let me share with you this little reading. It's only, a, it's only brief. And I want, to, I want you to see yourself right now as a caterpillar. Okay, in the context of this little reading that I'm going to share with you. And I want you to think about if you had to become a butterfly, are you up for it? Is this something that you can imagine happening in your life? It may have already happened, but could you see it happening again, right? So let's go. Let's see what this reading, uh, how it it pans out for you. The caterpillar spent most of his, his existence struggling to survive and only thinking of his immediate needs. The caterpillar struggled for existence against many predators, and the caterpillar was unable to see past the few leaves in front of him. The caterpillar could not imagine what it would be like to be a butterfly soaring in the wind and see the beauty of everything around him. Could the caterpillar really imagine what his new existence would be like? If the caterpillar told other caterpillars what what was going to happen, Most of the other caterpillars would think the caterpillar was insane. Most of the other caterpillars could not even begin to conceive what they were being told was possible. Would any of this mean that that what was going to happen to the caterpillar was not real? Would it simply mean that the other caterpillars were not ready to know the truth? When the caterpillar first created his cocoon, the caterpillar did not know what was happening. The caterpillar was still attached to the caterpillar's old world, but the caterpillar was no longer a part of the caterpillar's old world. The caterpillar had closed off from the caterpillar's old world, but the caterpillar was not yet ready to enter the caterpillar's new world. The caterpillar constructed his cocoon from all of the accumulated rubbish from the caterpillar's existence. This is what the caterpillar must discard before the caterpillar can become the butterfly. The metamorphose which the caterpillar must undergo to transform from caterpillar to butterfly is very painful. But unless the caterpillar endures this metamorphosis, the caterpillar cannot become the butterfly. The caterpillar has no idea what to expect. As the metamorphosis progresses, the caterpillar slowly starts to understand what is happening. However, the caterpillar has difficulty believing what is occurring despite his wings which are forming. Regardless of how hard the the butterfly tries, the butterfly cannot possibly fly until the butterfly first discards the cocoon. Before the butterfly can fly, the butterfly must force its way out of the cocoon, which takes some effort. One day, the butterfly breaks out of its cocoon and soars off into its new world, leaving behind an empty shell. The butterfly recalled that he had worried about which caterpillar had the juiciest leaf and whether the leaves would always be there. The butterfly now saw trees and knew that there were other trees. The butterfly could not understand why he had believed that the insignificant leaves on a single tree had been so important. However, without those insignificant leaves the caterpillar could not have sustained itself and grown to become a butterfly. The butterfly lands on the flower of a tree. 
the same tree the butterfly had lived on as a caterpillar. The butterfly carries pollen to another tree to fertilize the seed, which will fall to the ground and grow into a tree for other caterpillars to live on. How many centuries did it take for us to discover that the caterpillar and the butterfly were the same entity? We spend most of our lifetimes like a caterpillar struggling to survive, only thinking of our immediate needs. The metamorphosis which we must undergo is extremely painful, but unless we endure that metamorphosis, we will remain caterpillars. Now, I've got to tell you, when I read that, I was... I loved it. And and in the context of this paper that I wrote 13 years ago, it was about how does a normal business in 2003 or two, how does it become capable of e-tailing, actually having that capacity to do business in new ways that it couldn't have ever imagined and to actually have this new form of operation. And the challenge, of course, is is metaphorically getting business owners to actually understand what a butterfly would actually have to be doing and then being able to reverse engineer that process and being able to work through. But we've all got baggage and we've all got constraints and fears and concerns and um, things that tether us to a reality. And it may not be the reality that we need going forward, right? The, but the, the caterpillar doesn't get a choice. It doesn't just simply say, no, no, I've, I've opted out of the, the butterfly um, journey. I'm just going to stay this. Obviously, it may stay a caterpillar because it gets knocked off by something else. Yeah, It never actually lives to actually see that moment, that, that, uh, that process happen. But how about you? How about in your world? Where are you at with this? Yeah? Is the way you organize your world and the way you think about the world going to stay the same? Are you just going to keep eating the leaves that are in front of you? Or is there something that you're going to engage in where you're going to sort of draw in all that accumulated rubbish of your existing world and draw upon that to help you make this metamorphosis towards this new you? A new you that perhaps you can't quite envisage in terms of what it looks like. And it's a challenge for us all, right? To think that metaphorically, there's a butterfly out there in front of us all. When I look back um, on the the books that I've uh, written as e-books, they're not overly designed to be uh, literary works of art. They're not designed... Uh, to impress people with my ability to use words. Not at all. They're designed to enable me to reflect. And they're designed for me to have this honest process of reflection where I share it with other people. I put a stake in the ground and I say, you know what, this is how I used to think about something, or this is what occurred to me. And I'd like to share it with you so that I recognize it and so that I'm kept honest in relation to those things. And I'm more than happy for my ideas to change. My, the next volume of the Emerging Laws of Entrepreneurship Education may contradict some of the ideas that I've already put there, but they're just how I see the world today, right? They're based on the accumulated rubbish that I have now. And if I can't sort of work my way through that accumulated rubbish, it's going to make it hard for me to come out the other side, right? And be someone different, to be able to see the world differently. Now, I'm not going to go through all the attributes of the reasonable adventurer. Uh, hopefully, if you've been listening to enough shows, you'll understand that we've just covered a whole bunch of those attributes. We've just covered being able to see and understand someone else's world, being able to not take the knowledge that we have today for granted and to understand the context, being able to cope with ambiguity, being able to see opportunities in your current world that you that you, that you currently exist in, being able to laugh at yourself, right? Being able to make decisions based on understanding your context and your past decisions that you've made. Being able to find new opportunities by tapping into energy. All of those things are wrapped up in the analogy and metaphor that of this poem, of this transformation from caterpillar to butterfly. Now, here's the challenge. Unlike the caterpillar who gets, it's a one-way journey. He gets to do it once. It's a one-trick pony. For us to succeed in this ever-changing world, I suspect 
that we need to sort of move forward, change into something, a butterfly of sorts, and at some point we need to actually go through that process again and again. So for all you Doctor Who fans out there, maybe it's a little bit like that regeneration process where at some point we have to become something new again. I think writing, whether it's something that's natural for you or not, is a perfect way to start that process. Because we write as a, as a result of thinking, and the thinking that's required is very reflective, right? And then we can share it with people, right? So it's a, literally an instantaneous process. Set yourself up with an account on Amazon, write something, and then put it out there, right? We're not writing it because we want to make a living. I'm not writing because I need to be able to pay my mortgage with the way with the money that may come from it. I'm writing because I see it as an ability to understand the accumulated rubbish that I've sort of built up. And for me to be able to sort of move past that cocoon that I'm creating for myself at every little junction in my life and to be able to escape that to become something out the other side, writing is a process that would enable me to do that. So uh, during 2017, I'm looking at talking to a few people about their journeys. I think I'm going to start creating some interviews uh, with some of my past students. It was interesting today. I sent off the, uh, put the book online uh, and tagged it to a whole bunch of people, past students with uh, Facebook. And uh, a lot of really nice comments and connections coming back from people that I haven't seen for years. And quite a few of them are doing something pretty good with their lives. They're following their dreams. And they're definitely and maybe not a natural extension of what they were doing when they were studying. And so it would be great to talk to those people and bring some of their thoughts on how they've made this metamorphosis between from student to entrepreneur and any other steps that they've actually taken in their life to move from one phase to another phase. So I'm not going to talk about um, uh, New Year's resolutions. I think we can talk about that at another time. I'm just going to leave you with this challenge. If you've been reflecting as a result of listening to the show, what are you doing with those reflections? Isn't now the right time to just get out the computer, the tablet, and just start writing? You only need to write 10, 15,000 words, and you've already got an ebook. And it's such a simple process to then transfer that to a file on Amazon, create a cover on something like Canva or something like that, and bang, there it is. Yeah? You're a published author on Amazon. Yeah? Published author, right? For a lot of people who've never published something, I mean we do that in academia as you know, it's every second day you're publishing something, but I think it's a great way to sort of catapult yourself forward in terms of thinking about a new way, a new new you, a new a new start. You know, a new way of finding those wings that may take you up into the sky and give you a different view of the world that you've been constantly living in, yeah? Worried about those leaves. And where are those leaves that you just got to keep your eye on and keep munching through, yeah? And all of a sudden you see these other opportunities. So, uh, do enjoy um, the books uh, check out my Twitter account because I'll have the links to all of the books happening there. So if you and I'll, over the next couple of days, I'll just keep uh, reposting those links to the three different books. Um, and now's a great opportunity to download them for free. This last one, the Naked Educator, it's only ninety nine cents. So if you, if for whatever reason you've missed it, it's not going to cost you a fortune, and hopefully it'll be worth ninety nine cents for you just to sort of sit back and read through something and again reflect everything that I write and everything I talk about on this show is encouraging other people to reflect. I'm not trying to sell you my view of the world. I'm not trying to sell you um, uh, a, a guaranteed process of being able to improve some aspect of your life. I'm just simply saying there are issues out there that are worth thinking about. And if you think about them through reflecting on your own life and what it might mean to bring those ideas in or to play with those ideas, maybe that would be a good thing for you, yeah? Maybe you would actually be able to move some aspect of your life forward. 
So, I hope 2016 was a great year for you. I hope 2017 will be a better year for you. And I hope that you can find the wings to soar above your current situation. Cheerio. Thank you.